We turned the power-hungry Starlink Gen 3 into an efficient 12-volt system that can also be powered with drill batteries. But not without failed prototypes and an electrical issue that had us scratching our heads. Yeah. I need a nuclear reaction to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity I need! We had to print it diagonally as it was the only way it could fit. We got one of those support that failed on us on this massive print, which is uh, nearly 20 hours. So I'm trying to be able to have something to support it so it can continue printing and we don't have to cancel the print. Now, will it work? <laughs> so it's going to be warming up back to 220, warming up the nozzle in here, and uh, start laying some plastic again. So we were working on this prototype and uh, we were trying to save it here so we had to use a little bit of tape to support some of the spaghetti fez that is going but you can see on the underside uh, one of the leg fell and one of these and came unsupported at some point. So I had to put some tapes, eventually it kind of caught on. It was able to recover from it. So now we're gonna be trying to do the test fit after cleaning up. Now I'll try to get this one without breaking the little spring. Not bad. Where we want to turn modern technology into the 90s feel. Get your router from Starlink. You insert it like a Nintendo cassette right here, locks in place. And now it's holding your router. Turn it around. Uh, please remember this is only a mock up. And then we're going to be entering the switch, which I should have kicking around. So this should go there. Yes, it fits. That's how I like it. It's now on the battery, and now on 12 volt. I'm gonna have the breaker here and the capacitor should be after we clean up this hole hopefully it fits in there now the only thing we need is the non-flux capacitor flux capacitor <laughs> and it doesn't fit oh no so now this capacitor doesn't fit it's pretty much only had uh, one millimeter uh, tolerance so between the space it had located for it so the tread just adding the tread made it that it's not gonna fit so we just have to do that but instead of adding it we're gonna have to subtract it from the model okay now if you want to remove it this is spring loaded so you just push it just like your uh, first nintendo you had on your favorite christmas you ever had and we're gonna have to pass a wire through it, which essentially with this, I think I will have to cut that. I don't believe that's gonna pass, but let's give it a shot. Tight, but that's how I like it. Did it on the ugly side. Yeah. <laughs> so just testing the converter. to do getting ready to test the voltage so we're supposed to get uh, 57 volt i'm gonna try it on the battery so first time doing this setup so this is just the prototype so i temporarily connected it obviously put a fuse and use those quick connectors for now and uh, this battery hopefully is charged halfway should be good so usually a positive is in the middle and negative on the outside, so we're gonna turn on. Oh, 
have nothing here. Just in, out. Go to this, and like be one of these and not connect it properly. Oh yeah. They're converting. The converter is not converting. It's not good. You're just exposing more of the wire. Yeah, because I suspect they might not be touching properly. Mm. So negative. battery directly to the in of because it seems like it's getting 12 volt but to to the wire at least uh, from the battery but we don't uh, we don't know if this switch is working 100% which you can test connectivity I guess Perfect. Right. 57.2. So it's the switch? The switch. That's the problem. The first prototype gave us some valuable insight into the design tweaks we needed. We ended up switching to a simple clip on system. As fun as the nostalgic Nintendo cartridge style was, it limited our ability to print it at an optimal angle. We were also concerned about the side springs wearing out over time. So we went with a cleaner, more reliable design instead. If you're into off-grid tech and smart solutions for mobile living, make sure to subscribe for more. And if you're looking for a reliable Starlink setup, you can check out the final version of this design on our website at stokemanstudios.com.